Therefore, the cardinal features that will develop in these patients would be bradykinesia. In fact, the mnemonic that I can use for this is TRAP, T-R-A-P. But uh, I'll not write the data from the TRAP perspective. I'll write it the way you should remember it from the diagnosis perspective, that is bradykinesia. And along with this, uh, there would be development of tremor. So the T alphabet can be used to remember the tremors component. Alphabet R can be used to remember the rigidity, which could be written as cog wheel or a lead pipe rigidity. And then alphabet A can be used to remember the A component of bradykinesia, which will be severe enough to cause person to become wheelchair bound, that is akinesia. And the P component would be a postural instability. Patients of Parkinsonism, especially if they have to turn suddenly, there is a possibility that they might even sustain a fall and a possible injury, a subdural hemorrhage can occur. So postural instability with a gait dysfunction will occur in these patients. And uh, this gait dysfunction that we read is always a fascinating gait where the person will have a stooped posture, it will be bent forward. The arms will be on the side of the body. I mean, uh, the arms, there would be a substantially reduced automatic arm swing whenever we walk. Our arm tends to swing automatically. We don't realize that. But in these patients, the arm swing would be very minimal or will be totally absent. And the person will have a stoop posture, which might even be written in books as camptocormia. Camptocormia is defined as a abnormal thoracolumbar spine flexion. And there's an arbitrary cutoff to it that's almost more than 45% flexion. And the highlight of camptocormia is that this Parkinson's disease patient, when he's walking, he's bent forward, he's stooped forward. But when he will lie down, he'll be able to lie straight. See, if there was a genuine spine deformity, a person with a genuine spine deformity cannot be able to expect it lie supine like a normal person. But in these patients, when they lie supine, this postural uh, component of the spine flexion would tend to disappear. However, camptocormia, which is an arbitrary cutoff of 45% for the thoracolumbar spine flexion, can also be encountered in Alzheimer's disease or in multi-system atrophy, facio-scapulohumeral dystrophy. So it's not a very important, uh, I would say not a cardinal feature or not very important for diagnosis. But yeah, the gait abnormality, the stoop posture, when he walks in a short shuffling steps, that definitely adds up to the possibility of diagnosis of Parkinson's disease in a patient. So I've incorporated the cardinal features and what we'll do next would be to talk about other motor features that would be developing in these patients as well. But when I talk about the diagnostic criteria, bradykinesia would be right there on the top with presence of any of the following. The ones are tremors, rigidity and postural instability. Now the other motor manifestations, this I can write as trap. Other motor features that can be counted would be that the handwriting of this person. I mean, there is a possibility that an elderly gentleman who has come to you, he would be having tremors in his hands. He might be having postural instability. And he says, the checks in my bank keep on bouncing. That's because of the rigidity in the hand muscles that the flexibility component is lost. So his, uh, his signatures will not match with the original signatures that he had put up in the bank at a younger age when he opened his bank account. So that's micrographia. That's going to cause uh, bouncing of checks in this person. And also you would be having expressionless face. So instead of writing masked faces or expressionless face, you might write hypomemia. In fact, when you give a command to these patients to start walking, like you simply told a Parkinson's disease patient, sir, when I give you the command, please start walking. So you said start walking and he's still standing there. So you repeated your command a little loudly, thinking that maybe the old person is hard of hearing. And you said, sir, please start walking when I instructed you. And he's still standing. He's shaking his head. He's, he's trying to initiate the gait. But because the accelerator are malfunctioning, the accelerator are not able to generate the normal drive in the brain, the thalamus is getting inhibited in fact. So what's going to happen in these patients would be that he would be shaking his head trying to say, yeah, yeah, I understood you. But the initiation of activity will take some time. So if you gave a command right now, there might be a lag period of few seconds, maybe 10, maybe 15, maybe 20 before he's able to initiate this act of walking. That's what I mean by the word freezing. And then falls would be fairly common in advanced Parkinson's disease due to postural instability. The number of times a person blinks per minute keeps the cornea wet. But in these patients, they could be expected drying of the cornea because the eye, eye blinking part because the rigidity of muscles would again be relatively com compromised. Drooling of saliva will also occur in these patients. I mean, uh, though these patients will have difficulty in eating food as well, subsequently when brainstem involvement does occur, but then drooling of saliva can occur in these patients. And even when they speak, they will speak very softly. 
so uh, when when this old person let me say he is now wheelchair bound due to ache and is a component he is not taking his medicines regularly or there might be off phenomenon occurring in this person so he will not be able to even tell his family member that he wants to pass urine let's imagine a person with parkinson disease is on liver dopa carbidopa is having off phenomenon and he is he is stuck on a wheelchair he is not able to get up by himself and neither can he speak loudly that okay okay i'm feeling like going to the bathroom and please escort me to the bathroom i mean this chap he might urinate in his pants itself so the personal hygiene of these patients can also be compromised or let me say in a hot indian summer this old man is thirsty so he can't you know say out loud to his grandchildren or to his family member that i'm thirsty and get me some water so hypophonia implies that person is not able to speak or is not able to raise the pitch and the intensity of the voice we also have lot of non motor symptoms which contribute to morbidity in these patients one of them is obviously anosmia which was a non motor manifestation but along with this would come pain in extremities then is rem sleep disorders or rem behavioral disorders which means that this person might be enacting out his dreams like in rem phase you might have a dream i mean let's put it from a adults perspective is having a bad dream with respect to maybe dying one day and uh, nobody wants to die so he might actually thrash about in the bed so rem behavioral disorder can be anticipated or can be seen in these patients on uh, even subsequently autonomic uh, features can develop or autonomic dysfunction uh, though autonomic dysfunction when i say this is more a feature that seen with atypical parkinsonism because when we read about multi system atrophy that's when i'll be describing about orthostatic hypotension or during multi system atrophy which is again a atypical parkinsonism i'll talk about neurogenic bladder or development of even impotence in this patient so and even gi complaints i mean gi complaints would mean that there could be constipation occurring so the point is that autonomic dysfunction is a predominant involvement of multi system atrophy which is a, a variety of atypical parkinsonism apart from this sex drive the person would be hampered and then even because the cerebral hemispheres would be affected so there would be cognitive impairment and development of dementia as well what i have tried to describe before you is a must know for understanding the diagnostic criteria which are cardinal features then are other motor features and then the non motor features which can start even early in fact anosmia and constipation they are two features which are the early ones to develop and usually by the age of 60 years the motor manifestation will start occurring in these patients